So unlike Canada, the requirement for NRTL approval is not mandatory. However, the vast majority of your potential customers are likely to require and request it due to their own internal health and safety policies. Um, the US is very litigious and companies need to protect themselves. There is a practice in the US whereby insurance, for insurance reasons, and companies employ an AHJ, and that's an authority having jurisdiction. Um, an AHJ visits the place of work and reviews all manner of details, including installation and use of electrical equipment and machines. If the equipment has been reviewed by an NRTL to the correct standard, then this is a tick in the box and the auditor will move on to the next area. There's two routes to getting um, NRTL approval for a machine. One is through type approval, uh, which is best suited to mass produced products um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, the certification process is very, very onerous, time consuming and expensive. Uh, but it does allow you to uh, mark every item you make thereafter. Um, the manufacturing location would have four inspections per year, um, so it's, it, that's why it's, it's predominantly used for mass production because you, you know every unit that you make the same gets the mark on it. Um, any changes that you need to make to that machine would then need to go through a certification process and have it uh, re-reviewed. For most large one-off machines, the most appropriate route to certification is through a field evaluation. Um, it's less expensive or more manageable expenses. Um, one-off reviews where the label is attached immediately to the units. Um, so the guy or the engineer comes on site to review the machine and if it's all okay, he applies the label at the end. Um, a field evaluation would um, need to meet the requirements of the NFPA 79, which is the electrical standard for industrial machinery. Um, and this is quite involved, but as long as it's started from the thought uh, of from the outset of the project, it's not too difficult to meet. A large part of the machine which attracts a lot of attention during the inspection is the control panel. So North American NRTL approval is predominantly um, looked at electrical requirements. Um, lots of the machinery directive that we're used to dealing with deals with mechanical hazards, trap hazards, drawing hazards and things like that. There isn't, as far as I'm aware, any such legislation that mandates about that within the um, NRTL approval process, it's predominantly based around electrical requirements. Um, a control panel is evaluated in accordance with the UL508A, which again is quite involved, but if incorporated from the outset, can be managed and designed correctly to avoid potential costs down the line. Um, however, if the control panel is built by a UL panel builder, and has the UL mark. This is a tick in the box, and the auditor again during the inspection will move on to the next, next aspect of the machine. Um, a field evaluation inspection of a machine must be carried out in the US as NFBA 70 US wiring regulations is also looked at. Um, if the machine doesn't meet the requirements, then the machine is wrecked out which means that the power cannot be applied until it's brought up to specification and re-evaluated. Um, this, of course, incurs time and cost. Uh, one potential issue is that the machine does not have the correct gauge wire. This is because the US require much larger gauge wire than we would use in the UK. Um, if the correct wire size is used, then the machine will need, not, not be used, rather, the machine will need to be rewired. Um, in the correct size before the unit can be re-evaluated and marked. 